Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back again with another video. And in today's video, I am super excited to be sharing with you my 2021 brand new bullet journal setup. So I wasn't initially going to start a new bullet journal for 2021 because I actually have enough room in my current bullet journal to fit January and February, but there's just something about 2020 that is begging to be left behind. And I don't think it's just me <laughs> that feels that way. So I just decided, you know what? I will find uses for those pages that are left, but I need to start fresh. I just need it for my, you know, peace of mind. So here we are. I'm moving into a brand new notebook and I'm moving into this B5 size brown velvet notebook from Notebook Therapy with this deer on the front. It is so calm and peaceful and cozy feeling and it's exactly what I need right now. So without further ado, let's just jump into the setup because I actually have quite a few spreads to make. So let's just start. So first things first, I'm going to create a fold out spread in my inner cover like I did in my last bullet journal. I really liked that, though I am switching up which spreads I include in this little fold out section. For this entire new bullet journal setup, I'm sticking with one basic theme and I'm using a combination of this sort of rusty reddish orange paper and this tan paper to get that consistent feel through all the spreads. So to prepare for setting up my bullet journal, I actually decided on all my spreads and cut out all the pieces I would need just so that I wouldn't have to take up your time cutting a bunch of paper on camera. But I am starting off with just a full sheet of this dark rusty reddish orange paper and I'm folding it and gluing it into the inner cover. As you may recall in my last bullet journal setup that I posted back in August, I asked y'all to vote for what name I should give my bullet journal and the most voted for name was Little Blue. So that's what I named my last bullet journal. And then I wanted to name this one and I was thinking back to that vote and there was one other name that was voted for almost as much as Little Blue that was really popular in the comments and that was Evie. It just seemed perfect for going into the new year and like a really sweet name for our little dough that's on the cover. On the other page, I'm gluing down a little circle that I cut out of this craft paper, writing my name, and then adding just a little branch with leaves on it. And that's kind of going to be the aesthetic of this setup. I'm sticking with two font styles, a combination of this sort of loosely scribbled in serif font and this monoline cursive font. And then for artistic elements, as I said, I'm going to use this rusty red paper, the craft paper, and I'm going to incorporate some of these scribbly branches on some of the spreads just to tie everything together, keep it nice and simple and consistent. For the next spread on this inner cover flap, when I fold it open, so this is the spread I'm going to be able to see when I open it if I'm using my bullet journal, I decided that I wanted to swap out what was here in my last bullet journal, which was my ideal day spread, for a spread that I use even more often in, which is my grid spacing spread. And I've actually made a whole video explaining how grid spacing spreads work and how to make one and what they're for, how to use them, all of that. So I'll link that video in the cards and in the description box if you don't know what a grid spacing spread is and you want to learn more. But instead of going for a more traditional grid spacing spread in this bullet journal, I decided to just create a grid spacing cheat sheet because the page that's folding out isn't the same dimensions as the pages in my bullet journal. It doesn't have the dot grid. So I decided I would just write out the full half and third dimensions, both vertically and horizontally, so that I could just reference it as that quick cheat sheet as I'm creating new spreads. So in this case, in this bullet journal, it is 45 spaces tall. So half of that is 22.5 and then a third of that is 15. And then these pages are 31 spaces wide. So 15.5 spaces is halfway and then 10.3 spaces is a third. Then I glued down one of my craft circles and sketched out one of these plants. To keep everything looking really handmade and sketchy in nature, I'm doing the outline of the letters or the plants. Instead of filling them in completely, I'm filling them in in small strokes and squiggles and occasionally purposefully going outside of the lines. This is an aesthetic choice. I know not everyone's gonna like that. Obviously, if you are inspired by this and wanna do it in your own bullet journal, but you prefer to just color it in normally or even just to leave those inner spaces empty, 
that's completely up to you, of course. And moving on to the final spread of this little fold out inner cover, which is my key. I haven't included a key in I think my last two bullet journals because I have been using the same key for a long time now and I am very familiar with it, but it just felt like the perfect spread to put here. And I thought I would include it for anyone who's looking for inspiration for their own bullet journal setup. So I just wrote out the bullets that I personally use to keep track of tasks, work, events, all of those things. And they are based on the original bullets from Ryder Carroll's bullet journal system, though I have adjusted them slightly and added a few of my own over the years to fit my life better. I wasn't initially going to add branches around my little Evie nameplate, but I realized that one of my branches on the key page showed underneath the flap. It just came out a little too far as well as the edge of the Y. So I decided to line up some branches with those overflowing areas to make it look like they're more intentional. So that is my inner cover flap finished and we're moving on to the first official spread of this bullet journal, which is going to be my cover page for this bullet journal as well as a quote page. For the cover page, I wanted to write out 2021, all the numbers fully written out in a really large graphic poppy sort of way. So I decided to leave out the spaces between the words and just fit as many letters as I could on each line. I went with capital letters just to add even more of a punch and finished it off with a semicolon. And I of course went back in and filled in the letters with my sort of scribbly filling in technique to fit with the rest of the setup. And then at the bottom, I glued in this rusty red circle and created two branches. The opposite page is gonna be my little quote page and I wanted to go with page one of 365. Just that fresh start feeling, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> and incorporating that craft paper and the rusty red paper, and of course also a branch. Moving on to my next spread, which is going to be my future log. I'm starting by placing 12 little squares evenly spaced across the two pages of the spread, alternating between the red and the tan. These are going to be the backgrounds for my monthly calendars for this future log. I added the header in the upper left-hand corner using that same technique. And then in the upper right-hand corner, I added two branches. Once I finished that, I used my clear 2021 mini calendar set from my shop with a Sunday start, and I just placed them as close as I could to the center of each of these squares. I'm going to use the space underneath each square to write out any events, birthdays, appointments, holidays, anything I need to keep track of for 2021. Some of you have been reaching out recently to ask when you can shop physical stickers in my shop again. They have been unavailable for the last couple months. I am going to be selling a limited stock of the physical stickers for the next week or so in my shop. If you have been wanting to get them, this is your chance. I'm only doing a limited stock and I will be shipping them all out at once. The orders will definitely not get to you before Christmas and there's a chance that they won't get to you before the new year. Depending on where you live, they definitely won't. If you wanna stay in the know, follow me on Instagram and or sign up to the email list on my website. Those are the two places where I definitely will be announcing future restocks. So if that's something you wanna know about, those are the places to be. Moving on to my next spread in this bullet journal, which is going to be my Kanban board. This is how I track and keep on top of video creation for my YouTube channel. I've explained how Kanban boards work before in a few videos, and I do have one dedicated video to the system. So I will link that in a card and in the description box down below if you wanna learn more about how this works. But the really basic explanation is that a Kanban board is for managing projects. You break them down into whatever steps are commonly repeated for 
whatever projects you're working on. For me, that would be creating a video and you split up a spread into those sections for all the steps. And then you can use a little piece of washi tape or a little sticky note and write the name of your project on it. And some people like to also write the due date or some other information. And then you can move that sticky note from step to step as you work through the process. And that can help you stay on top of multiple projects simultaneously that maybe are in different stages of completion. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, check out the dedicated video where I go more in detail, but this is my spread for tracking my video creation. So I've just split it up into all the steps that I commonly do from the planning stage all the way through to the final stage of creating a video. And on to my next spread, which is my waiting on spread. This is the one that I make to keep track of packages that are on their way. And I decided to create two pages this time because I feel like one page definitely isn't enough. I also like to track packages that are coming from brands, whether it's PR or, you know, something I need for a sponsorship. So I wanted to give myself a page and two thirds for this to hopefully not run out. Previously, I've done a full page for my want and need lists, which are really just shopping lists so that I can write things down and think about the best place to get them or do some research before purchasing. I feel like I never use the full spread. So I decided to downgrade that portion of the spread to just a small little checklist. If I run out of room, I can always make another spread, but I think this will be sufficient for my needs. And of course, I'm using the same font style and the same branches to tie everything together. All of the supplies I'm using in this video will be linked in the description box as always, so check it out if you're looking for something in particular. On to my next set of spreads, which are going to be a gifted spread on the left side and a master work to-do list on the right. The gifted spread is what it sounds like. It is a spread to track the things I am gifted. <laughs> And while having too many things sent to me to keep track of is a good problem to have, it is still a problem. And I found myself getting quite overwhelmed this past year trying to stay on top of everything. So I decided to create a spread for this. It's probably going to be a pretty basic checklist. I might also write out whatever it was that they were hoping I would do with it just to try to keep my brain on straight. The opposite spread is going to be my master work to-do list. And this is just what it sounds like. It is a master to-do list for work type tasks. It is a brain dump sort of space, just anything that I need to do for work that is not an immediate thing with a deadline that is shortly approaching, in which case it would be on my current weekly or on my monthly calendar. If it's something that's a little more long term or doesn't have a specific deadline or due date, then it's going to go here. On to my next set of spreads, which are more on the personal side of things. So the left side is going to be my goals spread. I gave myself six sections so I could set myself six goals for 2021. I feel like with goals or New Year's resolutions, whatever you want to call them, it really helps to keep the number small. The fewer that you are keeping track of, the more likely you are to actually work on them every day or every week and to actually make progress. The opposite spread is basically the same as my master work to-do list, except it is my master personal to-do list. And it is exactly the same thing, but for my personal life instead of my work life. I like to try to keep those lists separate. As much as I use the same bullet journal for work and personal, I do like to try to keep things separated at least a little bit, just so that I know what is work related and what isn't at a glance. And here we go, we've arrived at the final two spreads of this setup. On the left side, I'm creating a period tracker because you know, if you're a human who menstruates, sometimes it's good to track that, you know? You'd like to know what's going on. It's good to be able to see patterns to see if something is amiss so you can tell your doctor just to have more awareness and understanding of your body. We love being aware and conscious and attentive to reproductive health on this channel. So period tracker, great for those of us with uteruses. And, and on the opposite page, I'm creating a date night spread. This is a spread I've done a million times and it's just a way to track dates that my husband and I want to and have gone on. Most of those dates, and by most I mean all, are inside our own home <laughs> these days, but maybe by the end of 2021, we'll be able to go out for dinner, who knows. Before anyone asks, J-F-M-A-M-J-J-A-S-O-N-D, 
stands for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. There's always at least one person who asks. So just so you know, those are the months of the year written out with just the first initial. And as you can see, I did mess up. I wrote P instead of M. I think my brain was thinking April. So I wrote A and P when I was sketching it out and I didn't catch it before I started inking it in. So I'm using my black acrylograph pen from Archer and Olive for all of my bolder black lines throughout the setup. So I pulled out my white acrylograph and went over it. They layer really well, so this seemed like the best option. I went over it with, I think, two layers in the end of the white. And then once the white had fully dried, I went over it again with the black and it layers perfectly. So love a good white pen or marker to cover up the inevitable mistakes that come with setting up as many spreads at once. And with that, we have reached the end. Those are all of the spreads. So I'll go back to the beginning and do a full flip through so you can see everything together in context. I really like the vibe of these spreads. I wanted them to feel very cohesive and calm and minimal and warm and cozy. So let me know in the comments if you think I achieved that. I would love to know if any of the spreads I included gave you ideas for new spreads you could include in your new bullet journal setups, or if there's any spreads I missed that are essential for you, I would love to hear about that as well. I'm really excited to move into this bullet journal and move into a new year and for it to hopefully be a better one. If you end up taking inspiration from this setup, if you end up recreating any of these spreads, I would love to see them so please tag me on Instagram if you share them. I also wanted to take a second to let y'all know especially for those of you who are new to the channel and maybe weren't here at this time last year. Starting on Monday we will be jumping into Plant Miss on my channel. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Plant Miss is a series I started last year where I post a video every day from the 14th to the 25th of December. It's also a time that I give back to all of you as a thank you for your support all year long with 12 giveaways, one to go along with each of the 12 videos. You don't have to do anything to get ready for Plant Miss, though I do recommend you subscribe if you haven't already and turn on notifications as well so you're notified every day when I post the new video. And this is important if you want to enter the giveaways because I am going to be picking the winner of each giveaway one day after the video goes live just for my own brain so that I don't have multiple winners to pick simultaneously. So if you want a chance to win, you have to enter the giveaways in that first day that the video is up. So if you are interested in winning any of these giveaways, all of which are open internationally and are stationary related, then turn on notifications. You can always turn them off again after Plant Miss if they're not something you want long term. I totally get it. I don't have notifications on for many people. And also you don't have to turn them on. You can just check in every day shortly after 12 o'clock EST. The video should be up. I just wanted to mention it so that no one is disappointed getting there late to a video and not being able to enter the giveaway. So yes, that is Plant Miss coming up in two days. I am very excited excited and very nervous. I'm going to be spending a lot of time at my computer for the next couple weeks, but it's all for a good cause. It is to entertain all of you and also so I can give away a bunch of stuff to say thank you. So yes, that's Plant Miss. Very exciting. And one more thing before I go, I want to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Jen, Stephanie, Catherine, another Stephanie, Sudres, Chelsea, Era, Rosie, Asia, Jeremy, Donald, a third Stephanie, and Cassie. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you very soon in just two days for Plant Miss Day One. Bye, friends.